Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Well, good day to you, brothers and sisters. Going to show you something cool as always. I did another PNG file. Uh, this time I've done one to aid us in the study of Ezekiel chapter 38. You may have seen my uh, PNG paint file that I've done before on Ezekiel 38. This is it. This is the one that I've had posted uh, with the folks at Keep and Share for easy viewing or downloading for some time now. And you've seen what I believe to be the correct way of breaking up the verses of Ezekiel chapter 38. Those 23 verses. You may have seen this before, but what this lesson is about is I've created another PNG picture file and this time doing a word study of the phrase dwell safely and the key phrase dwell safely is um, helps tremendously when you get that straight and a lot of people struggle with this and I know because I've talked to them and I used to struggle with it okay dwell safely is found right here in verse 8 B, right here. In the latter years, it shifts from the latter days or after many days. And in 8B, verse 8B, it shifts to the, in the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. And they were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. So people have struggled with this. I mean, thousands of uh, Christians have struggled with this because they're trying to figure out if Ezekiel 38, all 23 verses are about Gog the Assyrian coming upon the land of Israel um, halfway through this, the last seven years of the age. In other words, is this all about uh, the end of this age? when Israel gets attacked by the man who will become possessed by Satan during the fifth seal. So at, at the sixth seal, when Gog attacks Israel and passes through, and, and he's en route to take uh, collect up the precious things of Egypt, we're talking about Daniel 11, 40b. Daniel 11, 40b is the loosing uh, of the sixth seal. That same afternoon, you'll have the seventh seal loosed, I believe, at three o'clock in the afternoon, with, the, of course, the sixth seal being loosed when darkness falls over Jerusalem at noon, says Amos 8. That's at noon, and then seventh seal at three o'clock, and 30 minutes of silence, and at 3.30, here comes Gog the Assyrian invading the airspace of Israel. But my point is, the question has always been, are all 23 verses of Ezekiel 38 the 70th week of Daniel attack, time of Jacob's trouble, to start the curse that shall come upon Israel by father himself and use Gog the Assyrian, hired razor flying the bee, as his rod of anger, his rod of chastisement on his own people. So are all 23 verses about the 70th week or are some of these verses about Satan being released at the end of the millennium? One last time, acting like a final sifting of the wicked before we move into eternity. Okay, so do you divide it up or is it all about the end of the millennium or is it all about halfway through the 70th week of Daniel? This attack on Israel by Gog the Assyrian, uh, possessed by Satan. This, as you see here, is uh, what I believe, and I feel strongly about this, is the correct way to, to divide it up. Verses 1 through 8a is talking about the 70th week of Daniel. Verses 8b through 16a is talking about the end of the millennium. This is all about in the latter years. And then at 16b, it transitions back to talking about Gog coming against the land during the 70th week of Daniel as part of uh, Jacob's trouble. Now, one of the things that will help you is the PNG file that I did today on the phrase or word study called Dwell Safely that you see right here. What is this talking about? Is this talking about dwelling safely 
now in the year 2018 as villages without walls? And you may say, well, certainly not. Israel's not uh, being invaded by its enemy right now, but it's not living in peace. Well, which is it? Because a lot of shepherds believe that this is referring to 2018, when Israel is, the economy is strong, and the people are thriving, and the land is green. Okay, so, and I used to be confused myself. So what does this mean? Well, this is where this PNG file word study that I've just completed this morning, and I will upload this today to the folks at Keep and Share. This is going to help you tremendously. So this is really what this lesson is all about. You've probably seen this before. If not, you're also uh, welcome to view it or download it. Use it any way you want. But this, what I've created this morning, uh, will help you if you begin to doubt. Got it? So let's go over this word study of, or of this phrase, dwell safely, found in Ezekiel 38.8. We need to know, is this talking about Israel dwelling safely now? Or is the dwell safely in verse 8 talking about Israel dwelling safely during the millennium? Then Gog attacks at the end of the millennium. Which is it? So if you get verse 8 straight, then you'll probably get all of Ezekiel 38 straight. You got it? That's why I'm doing this lesson. And I never do these lessons to go, na 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 Guess what? I figured it out before you. No. None of us have, should have that kind of attitude. And we all should be humble and open to others' opinions. And hear your brother out. That goes for me. That goes for you. Okay. But I think this word study will help you tremendously if you keep an open mind. This phrase found in Ezekiel 38.8 is found throughout the Bible and it always refers to the millennial reign of Lord God Jesus. This is important if you want to understand which verses in Ezekiel 38 are talking about the 70th week attacked by Gog the Assyrian, and which verses are talking about the end of the millennium when Satan is released for one last time to act as a final sifting of the wicked prior to starting eternity. Uh, you see a lot of verses here. Let's go over these. Leviticus 26, verses 1 through 6. You shall not make idols for yourselves, neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar shall you rear up for yourselves, nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land to bow down to it. Hmm. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reference my reverence my sanctuary, and I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season, the land shall yield its produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last till the time of vintage, and the vintage shall last till the time of sowing. You shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts, and the sword will not go through your land. Is that referring to the time of the kingdom of God during the millennium? And the answer is yes. Because as long as we're in the age of Satan, that's not going to happen. But let's keep going. Let's look at Proverbs 1, verse 33. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Jeremiah 23, 6. And if you think those verses so far doesn't solve this problem, wait till you see the rest. Jeremiah 23, 6. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. In his days. Now this is his name by which he will be called. The Lord our righteousness. And we'll come back to my notes as soon as we get done with uh, Jeremiah 33. But that was Jeremiah 23 verse 6. 
Jeremiah 32, 37, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger, and in my fury, and in great wrath. I will bring them back to this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. Is that talking about after the battle of the great day of God Almighty during the millennium? It sure is. Now look at Jeremiah 33, 16 which I meant to uh, make it old black, but I left it in blue. Jeremiah 33, 16 is a match to Jeremiah 23, 6. I, it's almost a perfect match, but, but the Lord knew what he was doing when he reworded this in Jeremiah 33. There's a reason why he changed a few words. Look closely at Jeremiah 23, 6. And, the, and, and this same passage being reworded slightly in Jeremiah 33, 16. Is it just a coincidence that it's 23, 6 and 33, 16? No. If, if you study eschatology enough, you'll see that there are reasons why verse numbers receive the numbers that they do. And you may say, what are you trying to say? God played an active role in making sure that the verses were numbered the way he wanted them numbered? Yes. But look at this. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. So what words are different? Well, let's just look at some of the different words. Comparing Jeremiah 23 to Jeremiah 33. Here... Israel will dwell safely. Here, Jerusalem will dwell safely. Here in Jeremiah 23, He, capital H, Lord God Jesus, will be called the Lord our righteousness. But look here, in Jeremiah 33, She will be called the Lord our righteousness. And who's the she? Well, you come back here, it's Jerusalem. Who's this? The bride of Christ? And you may say, well, I thought we, the bride of Christ, are those dressed in fine linen, people, glorified beings. And the answer is yes, it's an entire package. Okay, the city, the land, uh, the glorified bride, it's all a package. Okay, Lord God Jesus, or you could even say the Lord of hosts, is marrying the people and the land. Zion. Okay? But I found that interesting. I wanted to point that out. He and she. The Lord our righteousness. It's a couple. Okay? The land, the city, the holy city. The bride dressed in fine linen, clean and bright. Yes, you should take notice that the fine linen is bright. At the flash of glorification, when you are lifted above the land like a banner of jewels, actually sparkling and shining and glowing. And then later on in Revelation 19, the fine linen is now clean and white. When that flash of glorification begins to fade. Something I just thought I'd point out to you if you never noticed Revelation 19's wording like that before. Of course, it, has, it also depends on which version of the Bible you use. But that was pretty interesting. He, she... Israel and Jerusalem. Ezekiel 28, 26. And they will dwell safely there, building houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely. When, when I execute judgments on all those around them who despise them. When's that? The battle of the great day of God Almighty. The seventh, beginning at the pouring of the seventh bowl. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, their God. We see that in Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 34, 25. I will make a covenant of peace with them and cause wild beasts to cease from the land and they will dwell safely. Well, if you study the curse that comes upon Israel in the Middle East and the world, you'll see that wild beasts are going to help consume two-thirds of the people of Israel. I didn't say wild two-thirds of Israel is going to die from attacks by wild beasts, 
but it's part of the package that will kill two-thirds of the people of Israel. And you say, brother, you lost me there. Where is that in the Bible? Zechariah 13, which is the chapter just before the coming of Christ in Zechariah 14. Do I wish that on Israel? No. Do they have to go through this curse? No. If they repent, Father will relent. Well, how does Israel repent from the curse? Denounce Gog the Assyrian, possessed by Satan during the fifth seal, and bow a knee to Lord God Jesus, their Messiah, and let his blood pay for their sins and transgressions of them and their forefathers? What are the odds of that? Not good. Should we be praying for them and trying to get them to, to see so we can help them stop the curse? Yes. <clears throat> And they will dwell safely <clears throat> in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Why are they going to sleep in the wilderness and in the woods if we're talking about the millennium? You get your answer down here in Ezekiel 38. Uh, verse 8 and in right here in verse 12. Because following the battle of the great day of God Almighty, when some beast cities will have no humans left alive, not even the children, the Bible gets specific, Israel will have one-third of their people taken away as slaves, and 10% of their people will remain hiding, and only one of eight of them will be males. I'm, I'm talking about Isaiah 4, Isaiah 6. Uh, this whole 10% holy stump. But my point is, once you understand the correct breakdown of Ezekiel 38, now, when you understand that and you go back and look at verse 8, had long been desolate, and verse 12, the waste places again inhabited, okay, that's that section of Ezekiel 38 that deals with, that deals with the millennium. And at the end of the millennium, Gog the Assyrian coming against the land one last time. So what's my point? My point is that these verses in that section are talking about how even though Jesus is here ruling the world from Jerusalem, he does not do the I dream of genie blink and make Israel, the land of Israel, to include the Middle East, the Garden of Eden. It, it will eventually become that. But the land will long be desolate. And the land will long be uh, a wasteland. Over time, the temple will be built, led by the master craftsman himself, Lord God Jesus. Okay, and the water will begin flowing from the temple through to the land. And it'll start to turn green, but it's going to take some time. It's not that he couldn't just speak the word and everything boom, within an hour or maybe instantaneously just turned green and popped up and 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 look like uh, you're on a wahoo. But it's going to long be desolate. And people don't like to admit that the word of God says that because they feel like it demeans Jesus's power or or. Yah, the Holy One of Israel, Lord of hosts, the Trinity, you know, the power of Almighty God. No, it's, it's, our job is not to be offended by the Word of God. Our job is to teach it. And if, if don't hide it because you're afraid that a babe in Christ may not be impressed with our God. Don't worry about that. Just teach what the Bible uh, says. And this is talking about after the battle of the great day of God Almighty, when few men are left in the land and in the world, all right, it's going to take a while before the land um, starts turning green and growing and people start having babies and bury all the ugliness from this huge uh, battle that will last for many days, says Isaiah. 28. So I wanted to point that out to you. Don't read these and go, well, there's no way that that's talking about the millennial reign of Christ in this section. 
See it right here? Don't let those two things I just pointed out right in here, right? Long be desolate, waste places. Don't let that cause you to go, wow. I, you know, the, brother, you almost had me. I thought that was talking about the millennium and the end of the millennium attacked by Gog, but it can't be because of those two phrases. No, you just don't understand how long it's going to take for things to start turning green again. Now, long been desolate doesn't mean hundreds of years and some kind of a nuclear holocaust. That's not what that means. I don't know how long it means, but it doesn't mean hundreds of years. It might mean a decade. It might mean two decades. I don't know. But don't deny the Word of God says that. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take Jesus to lead the efforts into building the um, Millennial Temple. The Lord our righteousness. right? Uh, the tabernacle of David, the Lord is there. Hallelujah. Alright, finishing this lesson in this PNG file. Let's go ahead and read, uh, let's see, well, I don't know if we read all of Ezekiel 34. Let's look at Ezekiel 34, 28. And they shall no longer be a prey for the nations, nor shall beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and no one shall make them afraid. Zechariah 14, 11, the people shall dwell in it, and no longer shall there be utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. So you could say utter destruction is a match to the waste places and that had long been desolate. I wish I'd have made that purple as well. Maybe I'll change that before I upload it to the folks at Keep and Share. See, that's talking about the same period of time following the battle of the great day of God Almighty. All right, this section of Ezekiel 38 that deals with the millennium and the end of the millennium attacked by Gog the Assyrian. Obviously, it's going to be a different Gog. Could be the same seed line. In the latter years, not the not the latter days, in the latter years, you will come into a land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel. Of course, we read a lot in the Old Testament about how Jesus is going to set his hand a second time and gather the remnant from around the world. And you should be looking at Isaiah 66, verses 18 through 21, gives you an idea how many people around the world are actually going to see the return of Christ. Not people out of the Middle East. Check it out. Which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You, talking about Gog the Assyrian, at the end of the millennium, you will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus saith the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. See, when we read this, evil plans on that day, it sounds a lot like uh, the 70th week of Daniel lingo which also causes us to get confused. But again, this is not. He's using the same type of phrases on that day. You will make an evil plan. Sounds like the crafty counsel, wicked schemes, sinister schemes, you know, that's going on during the 70th week of Daniel. But this is talking about the end of the millennium. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, uh, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Again, that's not talking about Israel today. To take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba, Dedan, and merchants of Tarshish. And all their young lions will say to you, talking about Gog, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, thus saith the Lord God. Remember, we're not talking about the same Gog that's getting ready to come on the scene now. This is a different Gog. It could be one of his ancestors. And this is going to be at the end of the millennium. Thus saith the Lord God, 
On that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north. When does that happen? When Satan is released from prison for a short time? You and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company, and a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. Will this really be horses? It could be. I don't know. This could really be horses. Jesus may not allow them. Uh, uh, airplanes and trucks and cars to pollute the earth. He may not. Everyone may do a lot more walking and horseback riding during the millennium. I don't know for sure. You will come up against my people, Israel, like a cloud to cover the land. See, all this sounds a lot like what's the uh, Gog, the Assyrian that's getting ready to come onto the scene. Sounds a lot like those verses. And Father knew that when he wrote it before the foundations of the world. All right, he wants you to spend another hour with him in the garden. Some notes here I wrote for you. Here we see that verses 8b through 16a in Ezekiel 38 are referring to the last sifting at the end of the millennium, while the rest of Ezekiel 38 is referring to the sixth seal attack on Israel by this first Gog the Assyrian. Also take notice that Ezekiel 38, 8b through 16a proves that even though Jesus is here building his temple and ruling over the earth, the land shall long be desolate and full of waste places, following the battle of the great day of God Almighty, when few men are left alive, which results in the utter destruction of Zechariah 14 and 11. So brothers and sisters, I hope this helps you with your study of Ezekiel 38. This is the correct breakdown. The after many days versus the in the latter years. Um, it gets confusing. It all sounds a lot alike. Two different gogs could be related. Um, I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you. If you have any questions, please shoot me your questions. I don't get enough questions. Uh, both of these files, um, by the end of today, will be with the folks at Keep and Share. I'll leave you the links in the narrative or the comment section. You just click on them. That'll take you to my Keep and Share site. And I have uh, almost 80 files uploaded for you to view or download. Use any way you want. You have my permission. Um, if you see any mistakes or errors in any of them, and there are some, please let me know. And I'll fix them and then upload them again. Well, brothers and sisters, I hope this lesson, lesson has been a blessing to you. And I can't wait to see you next time. God bless.